Hey guys, welcome back to Homeville, and this week we're going to do the final few rust spots on the Alferrari, and then we're hopefully, hopefully, going to be working on panel gaps. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, those of you watching previously will have seen that uh, last week I smoothed in the rear end of the Alferrari, got rid of the bumper mounts and, uh, and did my exhaust cutouts. Uh, we are really getting there. I know I keep saying this, but we are getting so much closer to paint. It is, uh, uh, it's, it's, I can taste it. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. It does help us out. Now, um, as I said, this week I've got a couple of places like up here I've got to uh, fill in. I've also got an antenna hole in the front I've got to fill in and uh, and like there's a couple of rust spots and stuff underneath the guards. There's a few little bits and pieces I've got to tackle. So um, enough yapping. I think it's time to get into it and we want to go over the whole car and make sure every little last thing is done so that we can uh, oh, get to that painting stage. It's so close, so close. So uh, you saw there, basically I folded up a little piece and I've had it in the shrinker and the stretcher to get some shape in it to match the curve that I need here. And I've kept trimming it down and down and down to try and get it pretty close. And um, that is starting to look roughly what I need. So um, I'm gonna do a little bit more, um, a little more, bit more panel beating now. I need to tip this edge slightly and just to sort of start getting my curve into it. So. Um, Let's do a little bit more fettling on this and then we can cut out my, uh, my piece and weld it in. All right, so um, I've made my piece. I've uh, put a bit of weld through primer on the back and inside so that obviously when it's all sealed in, um, it'll be nice and, um, and solid. And this is a perfect fit right in here. It fits in nice and snugly if I can get it to sit just right. So you can see there, I've got it uh, with that shrink and stretcher. I've got a very nice fit. So now it's time to uh, weld it in and smooth it out. That's nice, there's a nice patch there. So next one. So the next thing I'm gonna tackle is this spot of rust just here. So quick little patch in there, we should be good. All right, well, um, I've actually haven't filmed the last couple of hours. I've just been going around the whole car, 
with a uh, with a light and looking at every square inch, trying to see if there's any bits that I missed, any bits that still need uh, needed to be welded up, little little holes, little rust spots, whatever. The plenum just up under the dash where I made a new water drain, I still had to fill that uh, that hole. So I've gone in there and done that. And just a few bits and pieces around the place that I sort of always meant to get back to when the car was on the rotisserie. So I was uh, in doing that. So lots of little things. And I am happy to say that I'm pretty sure the car is, is good to go. I am happy. So that means we need to start getting this thing back onto the hoist, off of the rotisserie and back onto the solid frame so that I can get all the panels on and make sure the doors and everything bolt up, line up, and everything is nice and square, beautiful panel gap. So let's start moving this thing around. Alright, so I've um, messed around and got the Alferrari back onto the uh, the regular solid dolly, so it's uh, held up basically by its suspension mounts. So it's sitting the way it's supposed to sit. And now I want to go through and um, and spend some time getting all of the panels back on perfectly lined up, get them nice and straight and even the way I want them, go through and do any metal refinishing that, uh, that I sort of never really got quite right at the time. So uh, as I've gone through this build, my skills have gotten better and better. And uh, some of the things that, um, like over on this uh, this far side here, I've got the, uh, the where I welded in the fuel flap. And it's it's not bad but I want to get it better and do better file uh, metal finishing, just so that when I go to the body filler stage, that it's gonna be much smoother, less filler, just keep it, uh, like even as it is, there would be very, very little filler on here, but I wanna make it even less again, so it's just a light skim and just uh, enough to uh, smooth and finish out all the body. Uh, so first things first is, um, I'm gonna work start on the boot, the uh, easiest panel I have. Uh, all of the panels are not particularly easy. Uh, it might appear that way originally, but uh, it's not that the case. So uh, I'm gonna get the rubber out now, mount the boot up and see if we can get it to, uh, to latch and sit exactly the way it is going to for the, uh, for the final fitment on the car. A couple of hours later and um, I've got the rubber in for the boot and um, I need to tweak it a little bit to get the boot to close properly but I realized that uh, I searched everywhere and I don't have the latch for the rear to uh, to latch into the boot I've got the mechanism inside the boot here but I don't actually have the um, the little piece to go in there and I had to go down and see Tim at Zoo Autocraft locally who's the uh, who's a big Alpha 105 restorer, who's got 20 of these things, um, and, uh, and borrow a couple of hinges. So this is the uh, original boot hinge. Apparently this is quite an early one. Um, and uh, I'm gonna use this for now, but I'm gonna have to remake my own version of this. Now that looks pretty simple. It's just a, it's just a basic little plate with a bent piece of, uh, of rod on it. I'm sure I can whip something up pretty similar to that, but for the time being, Let's um, attach it on and uh, see if we can get a nice even boot close. Okay, so now with the latch on, um, I'm closing the boot and one of the issues you, that um, is common on these 105s is that this lip here, the rubber doesn't necessarily line up with this groove here. The rubber's currently sitting up on about this level here. I can get the boot closed by slamming it, but 
by just tilting this little edge, I can get the rubber sitting perfectly in the groove where it's supposed to sit and uh, we should have a nice smooth closing boot. So um, now I've got the boot. I'm pretty happy with the panel gaps all the way around. That's uh, as, as good as I think it's gonna get. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is go through and weld up these holes. So as you might've seen, I've got my Al Ferrari badge that's gonna go on the back, which I'm gonna stick onto the, uh, to the car. These holes are for the original badge, which I'm no longer using. So it's time to uh, weld them up. So uh, I've got my bit of uh, brass rod. I just hold it up underneath as a bit of a backstop and, uh, and weld it in because on the inside there's just a uh, slightly larger hole going through the skin, uh, the inner skin to um, the back of the other hole so I can't sort of get in there fully but uh, I can put the, uh, my little brass rod through there and weld through the hole so let's do that. All right, well, they are all welded in and, uh, and I've ground back the welds. The, um, the thing is, is there's very tiny ripples in here and I, uh, I wanna go back and give my shrinking disc another go, but um, those watching a few weeks ago will have seen that it exploded and hit me in the chest and then went up and hit me uh, uh, just near the eye. So uh, that was a, a rubber backing disc and it was on a, um, a pretty bad, badly balanced old um, uh, grinder. So, uh, I'm not gonna use it like that again, but uh, what I need now is, uh, now I've got my, my center, I need to actually build another backing disc because uh, currently the, the sort of the mount, it will just float on the mount, so I need something from behind that can sort of help wedge it in. I've uh, had a look, I've got this big bit of, uh, big bit of brass stock um, that's already got a hole in it, it's about the right size, so let's go now, get it on the lathe and see if we can turn up some sort of um, uh, backing plate for the shrinking disc. Well, that was a lot of time on the lathe, which uh, the lathe really seems to suck up, <laughs> suck up a lot of time, uh, particularly with me using it as I am still a, uh, a rank amateur, but very handy piece of gear. Um, as I showed you, I got, took this piece of brass, I, I took it all the way down to this little, uh, this little ring here. It's got a taper on the inside uh, that coincides with the, uh, the inside of this shrinking disc. Um, uh, the shrinking disc is held on by this sort of fitting. So the fitting goes on the outside. The, uh, the little taper sits over there nicely, but there was still, because of the size of the hole that was already inside um, this piece of brass, um, I had to make up a little aluminium spacer, which I've already tried it on the, uh, on the angle grinder, and it, uh, it's sort of such a tight fit, it's sort of stuck on there, so I and I'm not really that uh, desperate to get it off at this stage, so I'll leave it on. That little aluminium spacer works perfectly to hold this piece exactly at that depth, um, so it's nice and flush on the front. That uh, gives me just enough spacing to be able to put on my shrinking disc, hold it down, lock it in, and I've already tried it. Much better than it was before. So uh, now we're going to see if we can use it a little bit on the back here and just see if I can uh, help 
shrink some of these higher areas and uh, uh, and with a bit of the hammer and dolly work and a bit of the shrinking disc, I think we should be able to get it sitting just nice and flat. All right, so um, I've got the uh, the boot, and that's as flat as I'm going to be able to get it because you can't get through. There's only the tiny little holes on the back, and it's double layered, so I can't really get a dolly in behind to get it flatter. But that's just got very, very light lows just uh, on either side of these. That, um, but uh, the bulk of it is sitting nice and smooth and flat and even. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the panel gaps are pretty good. It's a little bit wide along here. Um, but um, the placing is good, the panel gaps are good all the way along the top, all the way around. Uh, the height of the bonnet, the boot is all nice and tidy. Um, that's latched now, so it latches and sits nice and square and flat. So um, as far as uh, it goes for the time being, I think that is one panel fitted well. And that's all the time I have got today. Uh, I ended up spending a whole bunch of time going around, doing all the finish welding, finishing all those bits off. That took heaps of time. And then uh, fitting up the boot, just going around. I uh, had to go to Tim's and get the latches. And um, thank you very much, Tim, for lending me those things. Um, making, the <laughs> making the backing plate for my shrinking disc. But now I have a shrinking disc again. And uh, it's quite a handy bit of gear, which I'll be using a bit moving forward, getting all these panels as perfectly straight and flat as I can. Um, but hopefully we are pretty much finished all of the, uh, the, uh, the major repairs. I'll just, uh, whatever I find as I go around, we will uh, touch them up. But the first panel is on. We still have two doors and the bonnet to also fit and make sure they're perfect. And I know they probably aren't gonna be as smooth sailing as the boot was. So uh, hopefully you'll join me for that. So um, with that, I think it means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1968 saw a change in the traditional Ferrari styling with the release of the Pininfarina designed 365 GTB4. This car is commonly referred to as the Daytona, which was started by the press in homage to Ferrari's 123 win at the 1967 24 Hours of Daytona. Despite all this, Ferrari still only refers to the car as the 365 GTB4. The car used a 3.65 litre version of the Colombo V12, making 350 horsepower and was available as either a Berlinetta or a Spider. A total of 1,406 of them were produced over the five year run, with only 122 of them being genuine Spiders. However, since then, many of them have been converted to Spiders. One US dealer, Luigi Canetti Jr., had one car sent to Panther West Winds in Surrey, England to be converted into a shooting brake. The Daytona shot to fame in the 1980s and that most beloved of TV shows, Miami Vice. The car featured in the first two seasons, but it wasn't a real one. The cars used were actually replicas built on Corvette chassis, Corvette C3 chassis. Ferrari was most displeased and sued the manufacturer for trademark infringement and then went on to donate two of their new Testarossas for the third season. All right, body modifications are done finally, and it's just down to getting everything nice and neat and flat, and even uh, getting all the panel gaps nice uh, before we uh, start painting. Start painting, yes. So it's 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 very it's it's getting so close. I'm I am getting excited. I think we're finally. all getting excited that this finally. stage is ending. Still, still, there's no paint on it yet. So um, yeah, <laughs> we'll see mm. how it goes. If it's worth doing, let, let's do it multiple times. Like, it's worth doing twice. Let's do it many, many. Or more. <laughs> uh, All right, guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Jeff likes to read your comments and let know what you think. Um, and if you want to see the videos without ads, I was kind of almost going to say without Jeff, without ads, you can <laughs> become without a Patreon me. and see them a day early. Yep. Uh, yes. And uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. 123 win at the 1968 24 hours of Daytona. 1967. So close. So close.
it's going way too well. I really want that wine. You can see, right? I'm like, <laughs> I could have done this all the, all the time. I've just been having you on all this time, but when I, <laughs> yeah. A total of 1,406 of them were pro there, pro produced. A shooting brake. Yes. Shooting brake is like a, like a two door wagon. Okay. Short, concise. I like that explanation. But these are just replicas and they were built on the chassis 63C3. <laughs> the Daytona shot to fame in the 1980s and that TV, <laughs> The date, do not put that in it. The Daytona shot, <laughs> the Daytona shot to fame in the 1980s. <laughs> you know that's all going in. 